Washington State and Oregon State are rebuilding the Pac-12. Is that all of a sudden a threat to the Big 12? This is Locked On Big 12. You are Locked On Big 12, your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Big 12. I'm Drake. T- Wait a second. Am I sunburned? Is that? <laughs> wow. That's burnt as the TCU secondary. 66 <laughs> points against SMU on Saturday. Thanks for making Locked On Big 12 your first listen every single day. I'm Drake Toll or whatever. This is the number one Big 12 podcast. Number 61 overall football podcast in the country. Uh, that's Spencer McLaughlin, Locked On College Football. Spencer loves to talk about sports. If you hit subscribe, I get to keep my job, and I guess Spencer does too. Is the Big 12 missing the boat with Washington State and Oregon State sitting outside the conference? I'll also talk about contenders and pretenders for the Big 12 the rest of the way. And Spencer comes back on the show for the last segment to pick every game in the Big 12 this week. Spencer, we have seen the Pac-12 all of a sudden exist once again in Mountain West form. It's just it's just kind of the Mountain West with Oregon State and Washington State. Let's make a scheduling agreement, but call it the Pac-12. Uh, we've seen I've seen at least eight to ten million dollars per team. I mean, it's not going to be a formidable league comparatively to the Big 12 or the ACC. But then again, if in four or five years, Washington State and Oregon State have flexed their muscles to rebuild a whole conference and leverage themselves Is there an area in which the Big 12 regrets not taking those two schools or any other new member of that conference sooner? Well, the Pac-12 is like a chocolate that's mostly dipped or a marshmallow that's mostly dipped in chocolate. You look at it and you're like, wait, is that a piece of chocolate? No, it's a marshmallow. I can still see the marshmallow poking out of here. It's like, okay, but you've coated it in so much chocolate. Like it's mostly just chocolate, right? Yeah, but the the marshmallow is still the core of what is in there. Okay, but like mostly when you bite into it, you're going, you're going to taste chocolate, right? Especially if it's dark chocolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But remember, you can't eat the chocolate chocolate without the marshmallow in there well sure you could you could just you could just eat dark chocolate no because it was melted and so that's why you had to have the marshmallow and chocolate so that's my analogy for the back 12 right now well, in relation you, to the why? were you laying in bed were you in the shower no i came up with this 30 seconds ago oh yeah it's been a tough 30 seconds it's been a really <laughs> hard 30 seconds on everybody here uh yeah. you know, past your marshmallow chocolate analogy yes. um is there is there a world in which brett your mark regrets decisions no. that he's made regarding any school no the pac-12 now harbor absolutely not who who could you possibly regret like i i understand oregon state washington state have more value than some other schools but like who do you look at and say man if the big 12 had them there'd be a power like yes if you had washington state and oregon state you'd be a stronger football league but do you need them no would you maybe like to have them for a really cheap price sure that'd be great but if you can't accomplish that there's no need for it and especially with the diluting of media rights payments with the new members that they have brought in i I don't think it makes a lot of sense right now so no the new pac-12 mountain west you know super smash bros fight night that that is ongoing none of this is a threat to the big 12 and none of this i I think gives them any sense of longing nor should it that hey we 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 maybe should have made a move or we we, we needed to make a move or we could have really gained a foothold here or there it's like no the big 12 is doing just fine the big 12 did everything it needed to do last year getting the four corner schools like that was the big move that's it that's done the pac 12s big move was getting four schools out of the american the big 12s big move was getting four schools out of the pac 12 these two things are not one and the same and the big 12 hit its big move and the Pac-12 whiffed on on their biggest uh, agenda item for realignment. So I I don't think right now in the year 2024, the Big 12 looks at anything going on in the Pac-12 and says, oh man, we're missing an opportunity. We should really think about this. Now in 2028, they might say, hey, hey, Boise State, have you really won four conference championships between now and, and then? Have you, hey, Fresno State, have you really been to the playoffs twice hey washington state are you a perennial top 15 program then they might look and say hey we got an opportunity to strengthen our league we're going to do it and maybe you know team x y and z just can't get out of the bottom houston perhaps but i think willie fritz will be okay i think that's when they can look and say oh there could be value over there but right now no I think Houston could redshirt its entire football team just give them the rest of the year to practice a lot i mean quite quite frankly 
Would it be the worst? Well, probably because with the way this season's going to go, which in all likelihood is one and eleven. Yeah. I, I don't know that you necessarily want to bring everyone back. Some guys can improve, but like you, you need to. They're going to get the number one overall pick. They're going to get the number They're tanking for Shadur Sanders or Travis Hunter. Um, Spencer, the one thing that I hang on to here, and I want to I want to justify your point a little bit. TCU, West Virginia, uh, looking at other expansion candidates from a decade ago. Utah was one of those, BYU recently. Everyone across the country was like, ah, mid-major program, will they adjust? They did. They did. And if you're Fresno State, you could adjust quickly with power four, power five, power six resources to become a player in college football more than you already are. So there is a way for a Boise State to show that its brand is worth a lot more when they're making more money. Spencer, though, for a Gonzaga, right, or a Washington State, Oregon State, UConn, where the Big 12 has had rumors swirling the last year or so in expansion, it's felt like Brett Yormark turned his attention out east. Hey, let's see what happens with the ACC and tread lightly. Is there a way in which you've missed the boat for a Gonzaga? Gonzaga, will you regret not adding a Gonzaga or, again, Washington's in Oregon State, but specifically with your ties out west, some basketball powers? I don't think so. I, I mean, I think it's the same conversation. You can see the appeal, but I don't see the need. I, I don't see how you look at the Big 12 and think, yeah, this is just a gotta have it. They're yeah. missing that. Like, in a basketball sense, there's no better league than the Big 12. There, there, there is no better league than the Big 12. And so I look at Gonzaga and think, okay, yeah, thank you for pronouncing it correctly, by the way. A lot of people across the country love to say Gonzaga, and that's just flagrantly incorrect. But I think I'm still the, working on Nevada, Nevada. That's my next step. That one next. you can go either way. That's like data data. Like, that's, that's okay. But Gonzaga is just wildly inaccurate. Yeah. And as a WCC school grad, I just I, I feel obliged to say that. So I think for, for, for Gonzaga, like, they, they can bring something to the table. But they've been having conversations with the Pac-12 for a reason. I think they do far more for the Pac-12 than they do for the Big 12. Because the Big 12 has so many members. They're, what is it, you know, 72 right now, 18, 47? I don't know. I lost count of If you point. ask it's, Bill Connolly, he says 32 coming to the Big 12 within a few years. Yes. Okay. That's a... Um, Weber that's State, a, Southern Utah. Let's <laughs> this. Yeah, go t Northern baby. Arizona. But so I, I think for, you know, Gonzaga and the money that you can bring in in basketball, it's much more limited NCAA tournament units, though, are kind of the key component of how you bring money in for the conference. And if you only have eight to 10 schools to disperse NCAA tournament units to, well, that's a much more financially lucrative proposition than if you have 16 to 18 schools that you have to divvy it up amongst. Now, there are more schools that can bring in more units, but on an individual level, Gonzaga is a team that would go to the Pac-12, instantly be the best basketball program. And, you know, they make a run of the Sweet 16 of the Elite Eight and they make a couple million dollars for the league that gets dispersed to everybody. And that money is is a much greater percentage in the Pac-12 to each school than it would be in the Big 12, which is why I think they have more value over there and why you've seen reports of conversations taking place. Yeah, no doubt. Spencer McLaughlin of Locked On College Football. Where can folks find more? You're going to come back later, but I want to give you a shot. Where can folks find more of your stuff? YouTube, wherever you get your podcast, however you're consuming the show, as a matter of fact, Locked on, Locked on College Football or Locked on Ducks. Either one. I don't have a preference. You might enjoy Locked on College Football more, but hey, if you want to know something about Oregon, I got you covered. Always. That's Spencer McLaughlin of Locked on College Football. Thanks so much, Spencer. Coming up, you're, who are the pretenders so and the contenders in the Big 12 Conference? This is Locked on Big 12, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by Roy. Roy is where you go to make an impact on NIL every week. Do you want to keep? Do you want to keep? Shadur Sanders at Colorado. Is there a way to keep him at Colorado? Well, Roy, if you download the app for iOS or Android, could actually allow you to have an effect on that. The referral code is locked on. You'll automatically be entered into a sweepstakes to win $5,000. ROI is the name of the game when we're talking NIL. This week, we've selected Shadur Sanders because he's really good. I'm giving Shadur Sanders $100 on Roy to say, please stay at Colorado. If you were impressed as we were with his performance on Saturday, you can show him some love too. Just hop on Roy, throw in a few bucks, and if everyone pitches in $10, it adds up fast for Shadur Sanders. And now you have the chance to show that you want to keep Shadur Sanders in the Big 12 and keep him from going to the NFL. It's actually a real thing you can do with Roy based on his standout performance this past week against Baylor, as well as what will continue to bring the Big 12. Get off the sidelines into the NIL game with Roy or support the players change the game with Roy. Visit Roy, download it on the App Store or iOS 
today. Today's show is also brought to you by LinkedIn Talent Solutions. LinkedIn Talent Solutions is where I went. I needed an in- I need an intern. Might have found one with LinkedIn Talent Solutions. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. It helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else. 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other job boards. If you're looking elsewhere, you're looking in the wrong place. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats to make it easy for you. Two and a half million small businesses are using LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. LinkedIn.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. That is LinkedIn.com forward slash locked on college. Visit them today. Is your team a contender or a pretender in Big 12 play? And if you're just joining, yes, I am sunburnt. That's why I'm wearing a TCU hat. I'm as burnt as their secondary was this week, but um, that is a joke. Get it? (laughs) So four games in. That is kind of a tough sample size to tell you who's actually good. There are small analytics that I feel like I can deduce which Big 12 teams are contenders and which are pretenders. Now, the reason that some of this is skewed is because you have games against Lindenwood. So Kansas is going to get a boost because they played Lindenwood. Now, the analytics that I'm using come from CFB graphs and college football insiders, as well as ESPN with a bit of Fox thrown in there. I, I've, I've built this like quasi algorithm that's going to tell me who's actually good in the Big 12 this year. And with that, I, I enjoy, you know, the, the little rankings that I built. What I don't enjoy is the fact that still... There are those games that I can't throw out. I mean, I still have to take into account that Texas Tech beat the brakes off of North Texas. I can't completely take that away. And I have to take into account that UCF, while I feel like they haven't really played anybody, they did play a conference opponent in TCU. But how strong was that win against TCU if the Horn Frogs lose and give up 66 points to SMU? There's a lot to take in here. But overall efficiency would certainly give the nod to the Utah Utes. They are one of the best defensive teams in the country, eighth overall in America, according to ESPN, based on efficiency. The only Big 12 team better, BYU. This isn't me, and I've released some rankings in the recent weeks, and people have been like, oh, this guy's a clown, or he doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm typically just using the rankings given to me by ESPN, their FPI and the EPA from College Football Insiders and a bunch of other algorithms and letters that you don't really care about or need to know. And when I use those, it's not my opinion that BYU's defense is better than Utah. This comes directly from ESPN's Efficiencies Index, their Football Power Index in 2024. They are very high overall on Utah, BYU, UCF, Iowa State, and Cincinnati. Cincinnati has graded really well. And to be honest with you, in the research that I've done, in the the boxes that I tick for good football teams, Cincinnati's up there. They're fourth in the Big 12 in opponent third down conversion percentage. 33%, only a third of the time, do their opponents get first downs on third downs. That's pretty darn good. Defensively, opponents have gone for it 10 times against Cincinnati on fourth down. Since he's only allowed three fourth down conversions, that's 30%. And that 30% is good enough to put them at number two in the Big 12, only behind UCF, who has held opponents to 0% on fourth down. And it's only seen an opponent go for it once on fourth down. Then there are schools like Iowa State. They're kind of tough to play around with. While ESPN really likes them, I still kind of hold out on Iowa State being a contender or a pretender. ESPN would say their defensive defensive efficiency is 23rd in the country. Offensive efficiency is 37th. That's a pretty good balance. However, opponent third down conversions, Iowa State's going to let you have a first down 44% of the time. Houston. What's interesting about this as well, and it's the reason you have to take all these analytics together, is because Houston is really good defensively on third down. Second best in the Big 12. They've only allowed 16 conversions in 53 attempts. That is 30%. I'm throwing a lot of numbers at you here. But what I want to give you is the reason that I built this and this and this into the way that I, I'm giving you the first the opening of this, how I leverage pretenders and contenders. That Houston statistic 
is there because typically in the second half, opponents have their second and third string and Houston's been blown out a good portion of the time, or at least schools are experimenting with new things, doing different things. They don't need to compete against Houston. So the Cougars have an advantage in the fourth quarter a lot, late in the third quarter a lot. For Iowa State, they're blowing you out. Their defense can afford to allow you to convert a third down, convert a fourth down. The Iowa game wasn't spectacular to convert on late downs because in most of the games they played, they've been beating you by so many points that it skews the algorithm. So then I go back from where that third down percentage doesn't apply to those schools. And that box can't necessarily be checked due to the funky nature of their first four games. And I look at the ESPN analytics that have, again, Iowa State is a top 25 team in the country defensively. And I told you BYU is number six in America on defense, which adds up really well. But the Cougars to this point haven't been great on third down. They're actually 11th in the Big 12, 35 and a half percent. That is the opponent's ability to get first downs on third down against BYU. And for the Cougars against fourth down, that is where they make their bet. Three for 10 opponents are. So on fourth down, they're able to get off the field defensively. That's really good. Only 30%. Think about how many fourth downs are fourth and one, fourth and two. Typically, a third down could be anywhere from third and one to third and 25. Fourth downs are typically short yardage, and BYU is very good there. So that's why their efficiency and analytics are so good. It's that third plus fourth down combination that makes BYU the sixth best defense in America per ESPN. Some other teams that might be contenders based on their defense. I told you about Iowa State. Arizona State has the 28th best defense in the country. I know they just lost to Texas Tech, but that's a Big 12 team that seems to be on the rise. And their efficiency overall is very good defensively. Now, they're 86th in the country when it comes to special teams. 50th offensively, because I still don't think Sam Levitt is going to push the envelope. But we're talking about teams that could be sneaky contenders. Arizona State isn't out of the hunt. So let me give it to you. Here are the schools that I believe moving forward are legitimate contenders, not pretenders, contenders based on analytics, efficiency, and specifically to me in in examples that aren't skewed by opponents or final scores. I'm going to take third and fourth down opponent conversion percentage into account. So all those things told, Utah is the contender. They're still number one in the Big 12. Their offense, not great. Really not great. 50th in the country per ESPN. 49th, I should say. But their defense is good enough. And contenders have a good defense. BYU is in the same category. BYU has the 57th best offense in the country per these analytics. But their defense at six, they're a contender. UCF, they're in an interesting spot. Their offense is so good. Their defense is just okay. But they're a contender because the offense is so good. They push the envelope so far offensively that in a game where the opponent scores 31 points, UCF's not out of it. Utah might be. BYU could be if their special teams doesn't step up in a big way, similar to last week. I'm going to put Iowa State in that contender category, Oklahoma State in the contender category, and do something crazy and say Cincinnati is in your contender category through the first four games because of how they've graded out analytically. They are not that far. So to give you an example here, Utah is graded at an efficiency of 82 overall. Okay. Okay. Cincinnati is at 74. That's an eight, eight point gap. Cincinnati grades at 74. The Arizona Wildcats grade at 45. That's a huge jump. And efficiency wise, Texas Tech is far behind Cincinnati as well. The Bearcats, Sands, a couple of plays against Pittsburgh are still undefeated and deserve more respect from yours truly included. Oklahoma State's also still in there. Their defense was pretty good this week. The offense just didn't show it against Utah. Maybe Utah is just that much of a juggernaut in Big 12 play. Pretenders. I don't feel like putting a couple of the teams in the middle there yet. Arizona State, Kansas State, even Baylor grades pretty well because of their, their special teams, number one in the country in special teams efficiency. But pretenders include TCU, Kansas, West Virginia, Colorado, Texas Tech, Arizona, and Houston. Oh, Drake, why are we pretenders? Analytics. I I mean, I I compile the data. I don't make the data. I don't make your football team what it is. Yeah, I'm not shocked to see TCU there or Kansas there. Not shocked to see West Virginia there too, man. If you've watched all their games, you're pulling your hair out. Some Colorado fans might be bummed, but I want to point at that Nebraska game and say, look, we saw what Colorado would do against a legitimate football team on the road. They're going to have those games again in the Big 12. For Texas Tech... You saw the way they played week one. You saw the way they played week two. 
don't forget those games yet. And let's see how things play out in Lubbock. I do have Texas Tech winning. I'll talk about that in a second. But for now, Cincinnati's got at least a shot. Arizona. You just you grade really poorly right now. And the Northern Arizona game didn't help you. New Mexico, your defense sucked against Kansas State. Nothing went right for you. Arizona grades second worst in the Big 12 based on these analytics. And then there's Houston. And you are the bottom dweller. Sorry. 111th best offense in the country. That's not very good. Not very good. Coming up, let's pick every game in the Big 12 this weekend. This is Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel's where I go when I want to make some money. I want to make some money. I say, FanDuel, hook me up. Help me out. FanDuel says, yeah, go bet on the NFL. Go live bet, too. You think the, the Bengals, they're losing a game by eight, the Baltimore Ravens, but you think you got a hunch, you've been watching it, they're going to come back and win. Place a live bet. When you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and... And so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. That is FanDuel.com. Visit them today. It is America's number one sports book. FanDuel.com. To go make some money. America's number one sports book. Visit them today. I imagine there's a contingent of individuals who sport the Ralphie themed buffs gear, not happy with the betting line this week. That's Drake Toll of Locked On Big 12. Uh, Nights by 14 and a half yeah. in Orlando this week, Drake. Look, UCF should be the favorite here. They're at home. I think they're a more complete team than Colorado. Over two touchdowns, what am I missing? Yeah, I want to first reference the sunburn that is a little bit. I'm, I'm more burnt than the Baylor secondary on that Hail Mary, which, by the way. I was going to say if Rudolph's nose became his whole face, but whatever works for you, man. Um, let me let me say this. I have grown in the last week to like Colorado more and more. The offensive line is bad. Putrid. Still not very good at the whole football thing. But I think the defense is so much improved from last year that Colorado deserves more respect. However, Spencer, if they lose that game to Baylor and Baylor, at one point looked like it could run away with it there toward the end of the first half they built a double digit lead you thought uh oh the bears look really good had that been the case or baylor just holds on to win if that field goal goes in with a minute and a half to go and the bears take home a 10 point three point victory this line doesn't look as crazy but colorado skin of its teeth gets it done and wins i think the defense is so much improved that I'm a little interested myself as to why it'd be 14 points or even up to 15 points. It's 14 with a hook. It's not just 14, Drake. This is 14 with a hook. Colorado could lose this game 38-24, and you're telling me they'd cover. Maybe this is a Vegas nose, and we just don't know, but this is the first Big 12 game we're picking this week. We're going to pick all of them here. I'll I'll go first. I I think the Knights are winning the football game. Thought that before the year. I still believe that to be the case. 31-24 UCF win. I also believe that UCF wins this game. I don't think they're... There's a way that UCF covers. I believe it's more likely they cover than Colorado wins outright, but I still think Colorado keeps this one tight. They've got two Heisman Trophy candidates who have been Heisman level. Give me UCF 34, Colorado 24. I actually just changed my mind. I want to give both teams an extra touchdown. 38-31. I I think the Knights win in Orlando. Uh, A Big 12 championship game berth is on the line in Manhattan, Kansas this week. I do not believe either of these teams, if they lose, go 0-2 in Big 12 play, are going to be able to run the table. And you're simply not getting into the conference title game with three losses. It just doesn't... I don't even know the last time that that happened. Maybe it has, and I'm just being ignorant here. But uh, I I think Kansas State bounces back here. I have not sold my stock on those particular Wildcats. Arizona is about kind of what I expected them to be, and we'll get to them in a moment. But uh, Kansas State is favored by four and a half. This line has fluctuated in there. Uh, Give me the Wildcats 31-20. I think that Kansas State will win this game, and one of the biggest reasons I believe that is because locked on Oklahoma State host Cody Stovall said so. And Kansas State takes this one. Defensive kind of fall apart there late. 38 
to 28. Give me the Wildcats to cover. Yeah, they were impressive against the Wildcats in, on their home field uh, once once before, and I think they will be impressive against the Cowboys as well. Change the mascot. I don't know how much the outcome really changes there. But how about this one? Number 22, BYU. 1-0 in Big 12 play against 2-2 two two Baylor. Looking for a bounce back. Is it a trap? to bet Baylor minus three and a half, according to our friends at FanDuel. I don't believe so, Drake. I am taking the Bears in this spot to disrupt BYU's mojo. They're coming back home. I think they're ticked off. Aranda's coaching for his job. He probably needs at least six wins to get there. I think this will be one of them and a big win for Baylor here in front of the home crowd. Give me Baylor to win low scoring football game, 21 to 15. What home crowd, Spencer? BYU might outnumber the Baylor fan base in this one. After last week, Dave Aranda called it the victory cigar. His defensive play that allowed a Hail Mary to tie it, Colorado to win. There is not a more demoralized team in the Big 12 right now. Dave Aranda is effectively Bernie from weekend to Bernie. So just kind of propping him up on the sideline for the next eight games. Baylor falls, keeps it competitive because of a very good defense, but the offense has been lackadaisical at best. Turn it over two or three times. BYU gets the win 28-17. No arguments here that the Baylor offense cannot afford to turn the football over against that BYU defense, which is very good. Jay Hill is doing a magnificent job there in Provo, but I'm sticking with my weird score prediction, 23-15. to TCU goes to Kansas. Look, TCU, you're wearing their hat here, Drake. I, I want to like TCU. I thought Andy Avalos was the right hire defensive coordinator, but you're right. This defense is an abomination. They are LSU 2023, but in the Big 12. I legitimately believe, I am not just saying this, Drake. If TCU had an average defense, you can make the USC comparison from last year as well. If they just had an average defense, I think they're in the Big 12 championship game this year. I am that big of a fan of Josh Hoover. So once again, I I will refuse to learn my lessons here. Nah, screw it. I'm not picking TCU again. Kansas wins the game 28 to 24. TCU ran the ball for 65 yards last week on 32 carries. They only ran the ball 17 times the entire game against UCF two weeks ago. They don't even try to establish the run. Kendall Bryles is almost as much of a problem as Andy Avalos is right now. And when two coordinators can't get the job done, your head coach isn't giving you a lot of help either. Give me Kansas in this game 31 to 13. Jayhawks roll over TCU. Iowa State travels to Houston. I refuse to pick Houston in the 2024 season against a Power 4 team. I think the Cyclones roll to their first Big 12 victory of the year. Iowa State by as many points as humanly possible. Houston by negative points, if that's a thing we can do. Yeah, I think that's absolutely allowed because this is my show, so I can decide what is and is not allowed. Uh, Last two games, let's start Cincinnati, Texas Tech. This one interesting. So Texas Tech, I think a lot of people kind of wrote them off after the Washington State game, and Washington State is a top 25 capable team. They have a chance to prove that again this week when they go to Boise State in a a classic Pac-12 Pac-12 showdown? Is that what we're calling that now? I don't know. You tell me. But I think for Texas Tech, they righted the ship against North Texas. They played well against a solid, not great, but solid Arizona State team last week. If they're going to be that dark horse Big 12 title contender, remember, they don't have a Big 12 loss yet. They just have the one embarrassing loss where they got blown out against Washington State in Pullman, which is a tough place to play. I think they've settled things down, certainly at home. Cincinnati at 3-1, and one, I didn't necessarily think they would be there at this point in time. 1-0 and oh in the Big 12, I think that changes this week. Give me the Red Raiders, 31-27. Yeah, Cincinnati has beaten Towson, Miami of Ohio, and Houston. The best team in that three is Miami of Ohio, and that's not very good from a strength of schedule standpoint. They fell to pit in heartbreaking fashion. I don't believe in Cincinnati yet, though Corey Kiner and Brennan Soresby are better than expected. Uh, we knew Kiner would be good, and he's what they've got, the bell cow of the offense. I don't know if it's enough in love against a Texas Tech team that's this hot Jones AT&T will be rocking in a night game. There's no way, no way Cincinnati wins this when they fall to three and two. Texas Tech is four and one. And all of a sudden, once again, we're talking about the Red Raiders being contenders. Editor's note, add a touchdown to TCU. Their offense is good. 34-20 Kansas beats TCU. Thank you. Okay, that's completely fair across the board. I had an amendment earlier, so I will allow you to do so as well. And I like that Red Raiders home crowd. I think it is an underrated home environment in the Big 12 when they get rocking down there. 
They're rocking. They love their football, and I think they have a good – I don't know if it's a great team yet. I do think they have a good team, and the Arizona State game last week uh, really proved that. How about this one? A rematch of what was a drubbing for the Utes last year in Tucson. There's a very different Arizona team. They're more than a 10-point underdog yeah. in Salt Lake City. I, I cannot get behind Arizona in this matchup. Isaac Wilson, Cam Rising, I don't care. Give me the Utes at home. Cam Rising will determine whether I feel like they cover. But let's say he let's say he doesn't play. I'll, I'll go Utah twenty four to thirteen. Utah has allowed fifty two points all season long. Like like TCU allowed sixty six points in a full game last week. Utah has played thirty two quarters and allowed fifty two points. When you saw that Arizona only put up seven against Kansas State, Utah is about to do, after last what happened last year, unspeakable things to the Wildcats. I know Kyle Whittingham. He wants to win this game by as many points as humanly possible, and he will. Give me Utah to win it. 41. The offense comes alive against an Arizona defense that wasn't great a couple weeks ago. 41 to 17. That's every Big 12 pick of the week, and that's Drake Toll of Lockdown Big 12. Who better to do such things with? Drake, I appreciate it as always, and I am so unprepared for however you're going to end this segment as usual. Yeah, who better to do it than, well, Kevin Borba. You can do it with Kevin Borba, but me. I'm a, I'm a great backup. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're number two. You know what? Some people are vice presidents, and that... 